All right, let's look at some guidelines for these group data tables. And then we can do two more examples. Uh, so number of classes or groups, so those are the rows of the table, should be between five and 10. Sometimes we go up to 20, um, but five to 10 is better. Um, so you can see in the previous example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's seven rows or seven groups, um, right? Imagine having like a lot more than that. It would be way too long of a table and hard to read. The very first example we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They both happen to be seven, but they're in that five to 10 range. Otherwise our table is too long. So five to 10 is a little bit better. Occasionally we'll go a little bit past 10. Um, but five to 10 is a little better than 20, but occasionally we need a little bit more. Um, each piece of data should fit in exactly one class, right? We shouldn't have five work in two different rows. Um, when possible, all classes should be the same width. That's what we did above. Uh, lower cut points should be like nice numbers. Um, right, notice we went by fives or tens, right? We wanna go by something that's a little natural. Um, and we never begin or end with an empty class. So empty would be, um, this was empty because there's nothing in it. So it's okay to have an empty class. It just shouldn't be our first one or our last one. So let's do a few more examples. Um, so let's say we were looking at homework scores. Um, so homework score, right, would be our variable, right? That varies from person to person. And the type of variable on this one would be discrete. Um, there's gaps. So we're not going to use that through less than symbol. That's for continuous. So on this one, um, I want to have five to 10 groups. And I really only have zero through five. So in this case, it's probably going to make more sense to do individual numbers. So we really only group if we have too many numbers, but in this case, we only have six numbers. And so now we have six groups. So this makes sense. Um, so let's go ahead and find frequency. Um, if you feel like you get it now, why don't you pause the video and count them on your own? Otherwise, I'll kind of highlight and you can do it with me. Um, but if you're feeling confident, go ahead and count them on your own. So it looks like I'm getting three zeros and two ones. That means three students got a zero on the homework, two students got a one. Um, the twos are going to take a while. One, two, three. I guess that's it. Three students got two on the homework. Um, threes, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we'll check the total because it's really easy to miss a number. Um, why does it do that sometimes? A nine. All right, fours, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And if I missed one, we again, we'll find it when I do the total. So fives, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And then let's just add them up and make sure they add up to the 44 students. Perfect, so it looks like we got all 44. Relative frequency, we're gonna go ahead and do frequency divided by total. So three divided by 44. Zero, six, eight, and then I'll go up to two. Right, because the eight tells me to round up. Two divided by 44, we get 0 0.0455. Five. We're gonna round up to five because the, the number to the right tells me to go up. Um, this is gonna be the same, 0682, right? Three over 44 is the same number. Nine out of 44, we get 0 0.2045. It'll stay at five because there's a four to the right. 
Next one is 0.3636, 16 out of 44. And the final one is 11 out of 44, which is 25. And I'm just going to add two zeros to be consistent. And let's just check, make sure they add up to one or very, very close to one. So these are just good ways to check our work. Perfect, it's exactly one. Um, again, it might be slightly under, slightly over from rounding, but very, very close. And then does midpoint make sense? Um, zero, one. So really any reason to have another column that's the same? No, so we don't need midpoint. We already have a midpoint, right? Because it's already a single value. Um, so now that we have nice, more organized data rather than the raw data, right? This was really hard to see patterns. Um, we can answer this question a little bit faster. So does it look like the majority of students are receiving at least a four? What does majority mean? So majority, I would say, is more than half or more than 50%. So let's find the percent and check it out. Um, if I look at this really quickly, at least four would be four or more. It seems like a lot of the students are getting four or more, but let's make sure it's at least 50%. I'm gonna write that down. At least four means four or more. At least is probably one of the more challenging words, I think. Right, at least 21 to drink, 21 or more to drink. So at least is that number or more. So 16 plus 11 means what? 27 students received at least four. Is that more than half? I think so, right? That seems like more than half of 44, but we can check 27 out of 44 is 0.6136, which we go one, two, so it's a little over 61%, which is more than 50. So yes, majority receive at least four. Um, some of you may have noticed you could have added the relative frequencies, you'll get the same number. Just whatever kind of makes sense to you. Um, we called this a single value grouping, and that's because each class only has a single value. Right, those were all single values, and so midpoints are not needed. So let's do one final example for tables. Um, we haven't done any categorical variables yet. So this next one will be categorical, right? Um, we're looking at network of a TV program. So we're gonna, this is the top television programs in 1998. Um, and we're gonna look at network in a second. These are categories because they're in words. Um, and then the rating is just telling us that they have high ratings, but we're gonna ignore that in a second. So we're gonna create a group data tape, a group data table for the network data. So we're interested in network. So that is our variable. Right, the channel or the network, right, that varies from show to show, and that would be a categorical variable. Because it's in words, right, there's no number value. So let's make one final table. Um, it should make sense that we're not really grouping by numbers, we just group by words. So the categories are ABC, CBS, and NBC. And we can just quickly count. So go ahead and count how many times each one shows up. So Let's pick a different color, ABC, ah. ABC one, two, three, four, five. Uh, CBS one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll remember that. And then NBC one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So eight and seven. And it looks like there were 20 shows. Um, if you counted, there's 20. So just make sure they add up to 20.
And relative frequency will be fast. We only have three categories. So five out of 20, eight out of 20, and seven out of 20. Notice we get nice numbers. I said you need four decimal places, but since we're not rounding, it's okay to have less. Uh, but if you round, you should have at least four. So we'll just make these all match with two. Um, so we didn't round, so it's okay um, to have less. If we round to only two, then it's incorrect. Uh, but let's see, do they add up to one? Yep. And then what do we think midpoint for categories? I don't think midpoint makes sense. So there's no midpoint for categorical data. It makes no sense. And so that's what group data tables are. And so we've seen it for different types of data and they're kind of the same, right? With a few small differences, depending on the type of data. So it's important to identify what type you have before you start the table. But otherwise, overall, it's about the same.